Well, today on Nation Window Cleaners Podcast, we're going to be talking about the differences between print and digital. So if you're doing any advertising, which I sure as heck hope you are, this is a good one. I got an awesome guest, so stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. How's it going? Uh, if it's your first time here, have a look around. This is going to be a great episode. And if you have not uh, seen this guy or talked to him or seen posts or even know who he is, uh, we got with us today Prince Steve, who your name is now morphed as minded to Jersey as Prince Steve. So what's up, man? What's up, dude? Prince Steve. I like it. Prince Steve, you know. Yeah. Uh, if anybody doesn't know who you are, Obviously, they're living under a rock, but tell us who you are, what you do. Give us it all. I'm Steve. I am one of the people who runs the printing department for windowcleaner.com. Uh, I met the Lambernides brothers or the Lambernides brother uh, back in 2012 and, um, and got involved and got involved in the print program that they offered back then which was at cost printing and uh been with wcr windowcleaner.com ever since so basically you know the print department was like just a little side division where we helped out you know some of the the customers from window cleaner and, and the wcr but now we've sort of grown it into its own like much larger division and we just were in the process of launching the new printing site and uh yeah that's you know just Printing and window cleaners and pressure washers is is my jam. You're an OG. You're you're an OG in the industry, even though you're not like a window cleaner. You're still an OG. No, but I've thought about like getting it. I've thought about you know getting because I read so much from you guys and I'm on yeah. the forums and all that. And like I just bought a house two years ago and the windows are filthy and the gutters are messed up and I'm like I should know how to do this shit. Like yeah, can I curse. I, I always forget. You guys you know? usually not. No, we yeah, try not to. Right, right. right. It may Sorry, slip. I said shit. Um, I said it again. But I, mean, I need to know how to do this stuff because, like, I don't know. I've had bad luck calling yeah. people in my area to, like, come take care of it. So, I don't know. But, yeah, I, I'm sort of an OG, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You, the interesting thing with print, people kind of think that it's, it's more or less, like, WCR. It's not. It's you guys. Like, your print company is – that part of it so like when people are like oh like what do you guys send it out we don't that none of it sent out it's you you do everything from i mean jill is amazing but i mean you talk to people she talks to people when people have questions on templates when they look at different print products and have i mean all of that is actually through a print person who knows everything there is to be about print. They're not just like, oh yeah, I sell squeegees and I also sell print. It's it's an entire company that it's own. It's 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 a lot more than I think most people even know. Yeah, for sure. And, and which is kind of why I'm so excited about like the new site coming out, simply because now we're able to really show everything that we do, yeah. all the services, and like you said, like. This is all we do. I, I don't clean windows. I don't do pressure washing. I don't, you know, clean gutters or do holiday lighting. My life is print all day long. Jill, Troy, all the designers, like that's what we're doing. We, this is a, it, it is the printing department of window cleaner, but it is its own company. And, yeah. and, and so, you know, yeah. Yeah. And I, again, we'll get to the um, print versus digital here in a second, but give me a quick rundown Cliff notes of what's happening with this new site versus the old one. What can people do? Why is it amazing? So up until now, customers were able to sort of order printing on windowcleaner.com. And I mean, quite frankly, the experience of the print products wasn't really that great. It was, it was not a fleshed out print site because print products are significantly more robust and complicated than simple you know tools even though tools have variations and stuff like that but for instance like a a, a business card might have three different stocks and it might have two different sizes because you know credit card size so that right there is what six variations and it's got different quantities that skyrockets the amount of variations so building that into windowcleaner.com wasn't really possible but now with the launch of the separate site slash division print.windowcleaner.com uh we have coded it and built it so that we can finally bring a proper print experience 
to everyone and we can add in all the different products that we offer and you can go online it's all it's still you know shop pay is available so you can place your orders super easily we're focusing on the mobile navigation we're focusing on the mobile builder the builder is like the biggest thing so originally you'd have to either come to us and we could design for you or you could download a photoshop template but now we have a proper online builder that's also available on mobile and we're still working on that we're like you can go right online and order your postcards swap out the logos you can mm -hmm. order your yard signs your signage all of that stuff so it's like really the 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 focus for the past six months has been the user experience yeah. we look at the vista prints of the world and we say all right you know, Vista Prince, a $5 billion corporation, they do some things right with their site, but there's other things where it's just like, no, some people just want to go and order a postcard and not have to sift through 10,000 options and 30 different industries and try yeah. to find a template that works for them. Like, uh, -uh. this yeah. is a print site with templates geared towards window cleaners and pressure washers. It's built with user experience in mind. You're not getting pummeled with ads and add-ons. It's like you can go on and order a yard sign and customize it and check out within less than five minutes with zero hassle. It's crazy. But like, anyway, that, that's my tangent. I get very excited about it, but this is years in the making to be able to bring the proper experience in all the products that we offer. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the nicest thing with with the change in general is that. Uh, not even the streamline, just just the simplicity side where before it was a little bit more tricky where people would order something. They kind of like, well, what do I do now? This is just like start to finish done. Like it's phenomenal. Anyway, if you haven't checked it out, we'll we'll get you the address and everything. Go check out the new site. But if you are doing any type of app. I do want to mention still working on the site. We did just launch it. If you have any issues, hit us up. There might be some bugs. Like I said, it's very robust site. We are constantly adding new stuff to it every single week so yeah. definitely go to it but um you know whenever you're watching this yeah no no it's new there's a little there's yeah. always bugs we get there's bugs no. on our site and it's been around for now i think like a year and a half so yeah 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 something like that but anyway the big difference is that everybody and their mother talks about like digital marketing and i i you know this i know this we talk about that all the time but like people tend to forget that you have to hit every aspect I mean, to the degree that people were in the phone book a couple of years ago, like that still kind of made sense at a certain point where now people go, ah, it's outdated. I can go and do this and I can do this, but there's so many benefits to being in print, but also being in digital, but also having your SEO. And we talked about too, you know, vehicle wraps and gear skins and all these other pieces to the puzzle that like you can be in to kind of cover all of that. And we were talking even before we started, but there are just people out there that are customers that will be customers of window cleaning companies, pressure washing companies. They're not even necessarily the oldest people. They're just people who aren't on Facebook. And maybe that's where you do your ads. Maybe they don't read or see or notice a Google ad that pops up and stuff. Like maybe they're not on YouTube for that. Maybe they're not seeing those. And it's like, okay, if you want to cover the most sections, people can have an address depending doesn't even matter where they go online it doesn't matter what they look at it doesn't matter what they search it doesn't matter their terms it they have addresses so eddm is incredibly valuable i think it has to be done right obviously you know door hangers we talk about flyers and all that stuff i mean what do you see for benefit wise in print that 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 digital just either doesn't do as well or that you feel like it's its own it's its own thing why why would somebody want to have kind of both pieces that's a loaded question. Uh, <laughs> that's a very loaded question. So you mentioned the phone book, and I have no idea how much it costs to be in the phone book nowadays. Um, my philosophy on business, and I've, I've, you know, I own a separate business. I, 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 my philosophy is always like, why not? So like, let's say the phone book costs, I don't know, let's say it costs $200 a year to be listed in a phone book. You might say, oh, who looks at a phone book anymore? I look at it as like, all right, it cost me $200. If I get like one call and I book a service for like, you know, $1,000, like, all right, I got a call from the phone book that I probably would have gotten because this person works off of a phone book. I think, why not? Yeah. So I'm very big on 
Yeah, you want to lean into where you're getting the really good ROI. And for some people, that's specific types of digital marketing. For some people, that's EDDM. For some people, that might be the phone book. Their demographic might be my grandmother who actually passed away, but she would have been the person who like found the information in the phone book because she did not have a smartphone yeah. and she could not clean her own windows and us family members refused to do it for her. My yeah. point is like, I always think, why not? So right now, like if you look, I don't know, I'm making up a, a, a number, but let's say like 10 years ago, email marketing was huge. Yeah. I run email ads. I'm sure you've run email ads. Are they really as effective as they were back then when they were sort of new and people were looking at email or are they significantly less effective because literally everyone is being spammed with 10,000 emails a day? Like yeah. they're not nearly as effective. What we're seeing now is direct mail is becoming significantly more effective. You know why? Right. Well, if I go out to my mailbox and the mailman hasn't been here to, yet today, but I see it right there. When he comes, I would put any amount of money that there will be a max, a maximum of like three pieces of mail in there. Some yeah. days there's none. Some days there's one. Ten years ago, there would have been a stack. Yeah. So direct mail wasn't as effective because you're you're getting Water a down. You're getting a stack of stuff and you're sifting through like it's crap, it's crap. Actually, this, this is actually an EDDM piece from uh, from a town near where I live, local postal customer. The point is you would get a stack, people would sift through, and the whole thing was you want to be the biggest piece in the mail so that you get the most attention for as long as possible and you want them to use it as a base. Well, now the people who are sending out EDDM, like they're getting a much higher ROI because it's not watered down. Yeah. It's not watered down. If I go to the mailbox, which takes me about, you know, thankfully I have a pretty nice property. It takes me like maybe 20 seconds to go there and back. Like I'm looking at those two or three pieces and actually seeing the call to action and actually being like, all right, you know, all right, this is what it is. Great. I'm not sifting through it. Yeah. So my point is I went on a tangent, but like EDDM works, lawn signs work, door hangers work. You know what else works? Facebook marketing, Google AdWords. I know nothing about how they work, but I know a lot of people who do them and I've done them and they work. Yeah. All of these things work, but you need to be present. You need to be touching people multiple times. Yeah. I know Josh, you and I have talked about like, if I got an EDDM piece or if I got a door hanger from a company, you know, let's just say Josh's window cleaning and you clearly designed this yourself on Microsoft Paint and you went to Staples and printed it and it looks like poop. I said poop because, you know, the cursing thing. <laughs> like, I'm not going to call you to come to my yeah. house. But if Josh's window cleaning had a decent logo, I got a pretty nice, decent print piece. I've seen lawn signs for them around in neighbor's yards or near the supermarket. I've seen them on Google. I've seen them on Facebook. I'm getting targeted with them. Well, now I'm thinking, all right, Josh's window cleaning is a reputable company. Uh, clearly people are using them. Yeah. Might not have the greatest branding in the world, but I'm seeing them everywhere. That's a company I'm going to call. Right. So it's like EDDM, door hangers, flyers, anyone who says they don't work. And I see this all the time. Like, oh, I try, I printed up 50,000 flyers and I sent it out and it did nothing. I got nothing. EDDM doesn't work. No, you did it wrong. Like you, you, you were misguided or you thought you knew everything. I would have explained that anytime you're trying a new uh, campaign for anything, you want to start small, you want to test it out, you might need to refine it. Don't blow your entire marketing nut on one campaign. Like, let's take it slow. Let's figure out what's working. Are you touching people multiple times in different ways? Because yeah. how many people are going to get one direct mail piece or see one Facebook ad and immediately call that company? It just doesn't happen. No. And, and people, when they create their own thing, they go, well, this is awesome. I mean, this is, this is, if you're listening or watching, you've sent me something, I'm not talking about you, but there are people every single day who send stuff. And I had one guy tell me one time that in his area, ads don't work. I, what? He goes, yeah, yeah. I've, I've done like, you know, I've done Valpac all the way through like cool. Facebook. They just don't work. I said, ads absolutely work. Your ads dog water. Like you made a bad ad. 
that doesn't mean that all ads don't work. That means you did a crappy ad. And the problem is, is that if somebody takes their hard their hard earned time, I guess, they put something together and go, this is great. Well, of course you built it, but you didn't test it. You didn't ask anybody, you put it out there. It looks awful. And like you said, A, it doesn't convey a message. It doesn't make the person feel anything, which is why people buy. It doesn't any of that come together. And it's not because it's an ad. It's because it's garbage. It's just a bad ad. And we've all seen these across the way. I mean, there was a website that a guy uh, first time spamming one of our groups that he posted this website and it, it literally, the, the header of the, the website was pixelated and he didn't remove the background. So it's got like this weird white box around it. And, uh, the other stuff, the pictures didn't match. And they're like, he must've stretched one of them to try to fit. So it's like all like weirdly. Yeah, and yeah. he's like, yeah, I'm selling these like $3,000, um, VAC systems or something. And I'm like, I cannot believe that anybody would give you their credit card information, yeah. much less spend more than 30 seconds. Look at your bounce rate. Your, your bounce rate on your vacuums that you're selling, I guarantee you no one's buying the stuff. And the reason is not because your vacuums are bad. No one gets a chance to even see that. It's because your website looks like it was made on GeoCities in, you know, 1997. Yeah, I was that, or like Angel Fire back in the yes. day. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and at that point, it's not the ad. It's it's not the how you sent the ad. It's the ad. You could do that with Facebook. When people go, yeah, Facebook never works. I don't get anybody calling me. It's because your ad sucks. Sometimes people forget that. I think one of the most valuable things you can do are door flyers and like five ups, like absolutely cost you next to nothing to do them because you're already there. You can create a message that's super targeted to this area saying that you were there. It gives that like keeping up with the, um, the Joneses feel they're incredibly cheap. I mean, you know, pricing on those are just yeah, yeah, yeah. ridiculously cheap and effective and a way that no matter what that other person's doing, when they come home, they're getting a door hanger that just says, hey, we just cleaned your neighbor. Sorry, our, we ran uh, part in the glare, which is one of the templates, actually. But that was a great one. It's like, hey, sorry for the glare. We just cleaned your neighbors. You know, that probably looks, their house looks amazing, probably better than yours. But if you need some cleaning, let us know. I mean, I could not tell you how many thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars that those brought in for me right. spending like, you know, $80 in, you know, a, a, a print run for, for door hangers. It just, yeah. it's so effective. And it's not a Facebook ad. It's not a Yellow Pages ad. It's not a. It's not a, anything that's not directly targeted to just them because it was just their neighbor. Now they want to keep up with it. It's just. A, it's a whole other way to communicate with somebody you cannot do in any other platform. Two things there: my electrician and my plumber, and actually my landscaper. All three of those people that I use for my house, I got from my neighbors because yeah. I saw them servicing my neighbors. Like that is so important. That's like a, that's better than a warm referral. That's yeah. like, you know, I, I talked to Kathy next door uh, about the landscapers and she's like, yeah, absolutely. His name is actually Josh, the owner. Um, absolutely. Use Josh. Like yeah. the door hanger, the five round thing is so effective and the part of the glare is the best one. And that is actually available on the site, editable online. That, that, so was, a, that was a smooth. Going, that was a smooth transition there. I yeah, like that. Yeah. I like that. Um, and it's like, it's why not? Yeah. Why not? Because someone on Facebook said door hangers don't work because they they paid some kid or they went out themselves and designed a, a door hanger that, like, like you said, doesn't make somebody feel anything. It doesn't have a good call to action. The branding is is not good. You were talking about the, the websites before, and it got me thinking. The only product I can say in the past, maybe randomly, I'm just going to say maybe a year, maybe even longer. The only product that I ordered from a website where the website was trash, and I mean trash, was simply because it was the only place I can get this one product. And my dog trainer, who I work with for my dog, told me to order this specific product. So yeah. I ordered a specific type of collar from a specific person. I would have never ordered from this website. Like, yeah. and I think people need to realize like in the, especially in the home improvement contractor world, like older people are, you know, a big demographic to people who can't do it themselves. But like that generation is dying off and they're being replaced by people like me who, yeah, I can do it myself, but I don't want to, but also I'm not going to use a company that doesn't make me feel good from a design standpoint or from like a trustworthy quality. Standpoint. 
Yeah. If, if your piece is in quality, how do I know your work is quality? Exactly. Like I judge people and it's not because I'm a printer. I judge people based on their brands. There are a few brands I'll never use simply because I hate their logo or I hate their name. Raymore and Flanagan is one of them. People make fun of me for it. Like I hate Raymore and Flanagan so much, even though they're a giant brand. But the point is like, I do judge people on, uh, I judge companies on how they make me feel. Yeah. So that means if you got to spend, you know, even like a few hundred dollars to get some form of decent branding done and be consistent and make me feel like you are elsewhere and not just a random person who's going to come to my house and like, yeah. you know, want to come inside to do the windows. Like you, you got to make me feel good. I, yeah. I don't know. yeah. That again, when you have somebody coming into your house, you have to trust them. If I don't have that right away, it's just, it's so hard. Now you have to break that. And people say, well, you know, designing, like I'm, I made my own logo and it's, you know, clip art put together and, yeah. and it's like, well, I don't have money for a logo or I don't have it's like, this logo. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's a whole nother story there. <laughs> but they, they say, I don't have that money for logo. And it's like, you know, like, you don't have the few hundred dollars or thousand dollars even to have like your brand built, but that's your image forever. That means from, from day one, everything you do is based off of that. And you have that much more. I mean, it's, I always say brand everything because like, again, I know you're with print. So this sounds, you know, pushing it that way. But I love the fact that when I can send an envelope with my invoice in it, right, my envelope is logoed and it looks the same branding and coloring that the the um, the main um, estimate is, right? It is the same as my letterhead is. It's the same as the business card that I put in there. And it's the same as every uh, third page that I put in there for my little ads. I mean, when somebody looks at that, they open it up, they go, this guy's trying, right? And it costs you next to nothing. I mean, to get that next level does not cost billions. When people say, well, well, you know, I'm, I'm just doing this myself right now. I don't have the money. It's like, you could find the money now to do that and have it forever. Yes, maybe you'll rebrand after 10 years, but up until that point, everything touches that. The most successful companies are the ones that have the best branding too in our industry. Absolutely by far. You know, it just it's just, it's just a fact. I um this is not this is not a, a, a pitch. This is not a pitch, but um <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, I did have these. These are QR code stickers that were like doing samples for some different people. Yes. I think, uh, I think uh, Jill did some for you too. And like some of these brands are awesome and they're doing really good. You, you know, Brian. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's Brian. So, like, uh, I, it, the, you don't need a lot of money for your brand to look decent. No. There are simple things that you can do that don't even require money. Like if you're doing things yourself, I, I see this all the time. And especially now, like we have the builder set up where people can, you know, do things themselves. Simple things like alignment and, and spacing go a long way and yeah. sizing. And so like when we, we take it upon ourselves, when we see something come in and like someone's looking to print, like we had a business card the other day that somebody placed online. And I, I personally looked at it and I'm like, all right, this, we need to adjust some of these things. We didn't have to, didn't charge for it. Sent yeah. the proof to the customer is like, listen, this should really be lined up. Or, you know, the, there was one thing where the font was just entirely too big. And I was like, mm -hmm. this looks like it was done by you. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, there are simple things that you can do to remain consistent in your branding, to have your branding look decent. You don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars. And also, this is a, a, something that kind of peeves me. If you share your design on any sort of social media and asking for opinions from people, try not to get upset Bended. when they give you the opinion <laughs> that you need to hear. Don't yeah. share something only looking for positive feedback. Like these, some of these people, especially like pro, some of these people really know what they're talking about. And I try to stay away because I don't want to constantly be like, oh, the printing department can, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, or if I do comment, I try to be, you know, not even mention that I'm a printer, but like, take that advice. Yeah. Change some things. Don't 
convolute your vehicle wrap with a paragraph that nobody's going to read or don't right. you know put a, a a a brochure's worth of information on your business card yeah or like you know no, nobody's ever read one of those where it lists like 10 things and chose the 10th one and called you from it yeah, nobody's even made it past yeah. the third one like i always say that if you're if your main bread and butter is window cleaning the biggest words it should just have your logo and say window cleaning yeah. then when they're curious right then they find out you could have other stuff your upsells there all that stuff if you put you know nobody looks nobody is reading all of those things nobody yeah. cares nobody it like the, the writing at a, a fifth grade level is the concept where your brain can can glaze over things and still understand it. As soon as you put too much information, it's gone. And that's one of the big things, again, when it comes back to why they say one thing doesn't work over the other, they're just not doing that one thing right. And right. people will always take offense when they create something because they go, hey, this thing I made, it's my baby. Look at it. What do you think? And you go, well, you know, maybe change. Well, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, you asked a question and I answered the question. So I'm sorry that you didn't like that answer. Yeah. I want to talk. I, my brother just sent me something and I hope he doesn't watch this. He sent me something earlier today. He, he actually works for the New Jersey devils and, um, and he sent me a, a sort of logo S thing for some merchandise and asked me my opinion. And uh, I gave my opinion and um, my opinion wasn't liked. Yes. It's like, well, why'd you ask me for my opinion? They, they are, he was only looking for like, oh my God, that's amazing. And it's like, well, no, you need to be open because I'm the one looking from the outside. You can, same thing goes in print. Like when you're designing something, you can look at the same mistake 27 times and never see it. And yeah. then like the very next person sees it immediately. Like they, there are certain things that happen, like biases when you're looking at your own stuff that like you really do need the opinion of other, other people. So this, this sounds ridiculous as far as a metaphor, but if you're making, say you're making a chili and you're tasting the chili every few times you add stuff, you won't taste the chili at the end. And right. it's because you've been tasting it throughout the entire thing, right? You just, right. You, you can't taste it anymore. The next person can go, Whoa, it's super salty. Well, you've been tasting it through the entire time. Your mouth is getting numb to those kind of th flavors. And it's the same thing with, with, with right. just anything, you right. know, but Again, I digress. This isn't beating you guys up for, for what you're doing, but if you're asking and you do want to make changes, by the other way, if you ask a question on some of these things, you go in there and say, Steve, what do you think about this? And Steve says, oh, I, th I think maybe doing this. You can go, oh, cool. I see where you're coming from. Yeah, I kind of like it the original way though. Thanks for like, that's still taking it in. You don't have to agree with everything or right. change everything. It's just, if you're going to ask that you should ask that you at least are open to the ideas of why somebody's saying certain things. Yeah. And you don't want to exist in an echo chamber either, where you're like only talking to people who are like minded to you. I like it's impossible for me to keep up with everything from a marketing standpoint. And I try my best, but like I don't know everything and I'm wrong a lot on some things. 